Hello? Hello? Hi. What the fuck was that? This fucking headset's dying. Hello everyone, how are we doing? I just had to do a quick redo on this start of the video because my headset decided to stop working and my microphone obviously if it doesn't record anything well I'm sure there's a couple people out there who are like well Morty that does, that's so much better I hate your cast well you know what screw you guys I got the mic working you gotta listen to me all right welcome back uh, as mentioned in the last YouTube only video we have the winner of the previous one now up against Rogue at Blue Zerg in the bottom left hand side he is playing stats he took down Gumiho in our previous best of three. So that's uh, what's going on today. Um, again, hoping for all three games here today. Hoping that we get a little bit of that. Rather than uh, just a quick 2-0 bop. But let's see what happens. Obviously, Rogan stats. Really two of the very best. Two of the best of their races in the world. And usually when they play it's some fun matches. Especially because Rogue isn't your typical. Oh, I'm just going to macro every game Zerg and see what happens to me. Uh, he will throw in some cheese. He will absolutely change things up and he will be the aggressor at times. So definitely one to watch out for. This could be a fun one. Again, guys, if you end up liking this video, do leave a like. Click that button down below. Consider subscribing to the channel. All of it helps us greatly. And, uh, you know, every little bit of interaction with the video helps a bunch. Even if you just leave a comment that's like, hey, Wardy, I watched this. That said, I'll give you something to talk about in the comments I asked you last time about the, you know, potentially doing like a match arena, a fundraiser for like a YouTube only series. You know, so for example, we try and raise $100 to do like a best of five or best of seven show match and we could maybe open it to you guys as to who we get to play in that show match as well or we guarantee, you know, two high level Korean players. I just want to know your opinions on that again. So if it's something, match arena pages are really cool because usually we'll get some coupon codes, which means you can add some money to free, uh, for free. Uh, you can get some, you know, clickable links where you kind of follow some people on Twitter and stuff and you get money for free as well to add to the prize pool. And that actually goes a long way and it's what we do for a lot of our tournaments when we stream on Twitch, etc. I just wondered if that would be something that would be maybe worth expanding to the YouTubes. If it's something that you guys would click on, if you guys would use those coupon codes, for example, to build up a bit of a prize pool and to help us fund those. Because I'm absolutely down to do it. It's just difficult for me to fund YouTube-only content because... It's it's kind of expensive. I guess we could maybe run like a YouTube only. It, it is kind of expensive though for the amount of games we get and stuff like that. It's it's hard to justify versus you know running one for Twitch unless we maybe start getting some better YouTube numbers. Anyways, enough about all of that. I don't want to go on about it too long. Let's dive into this game because we do have stats coming across the map with his first adept here. So looking to apply some pressure in this PVZ, the Stargate going to be finishing. This, by the way, again, just quickly, is a replay from the Alimo League. You can absolutely check out the Alimo League and their Patreon page, patreon.com slash Moly. Please do check it out. That's where you can get hold of all of the, these replays, just like I have for these uh, for this series and the previous one as well. So Adept is uh, going to be able to block that drone from building the spore. So that's a couple of drones going down. And we're going to be seeing another gateway coming down at the front as well. So... Just setting up a bit of a wall off over here as Queens continue to build up at the moment. An overlord from Rogue heading over to the right hand side. Getting into position to see what's going on. Ling speed coming up just over halfway done as well. I mean pretty typical from stats then all said and done. Opens with the Phoenix first into the Oracle so he's really eager to deny the scouting. And when you're eager to deny the scouting like this that could be because you've got something of a plan coming up beyond this. He is going to take the gases in front of this overlord. Interesting because you could have waited, what, like 5 to 10 more seconds, and then that Overlord wouldn't have had the, that information unless he's trying to fake something out with that. So, a couple of possibilities there. We'll see how much stats puts into these gases. He is going to mine from them, though. You can already see he's going up to the work account to make use of these gases. So, absolutely just wants to get those run. And then obviously he wasn't afraid of the Overlord seeing that either. And even with a Stargate opening, I guess it's not too surprising. There's very few Stargate builds that then go and stick on two gases, even if you go all in. Um, th there's only really a couple, so even if you want to get aggressive here as stats in the next few moments, usually you go double gas because you're trying to make up from the fact that you've actually opened Stargate, so... Stats does open well for the Stargate as well, obviously he got that Overlord kill with the Phoenix earlier. Now he gets two drones on the opening Oracle play, the Phoenix coming in, lifting that Queen just to minimize some of the anti-air, making sure that the Oracle doesn't take too much damage. And wow, now going up to what, a third Oracle here? That's uh, really quite crazy as we see the lair coming up too. That's going to be finishing in the next few moments. Phoenix 
picking its way through that Overlord and actually going to lift up this Queen. The two Oracles together do very well. Is he going to sacrifice this Oracle? Pulled it back pretty late. It is going to be just in time though. So stats playing well. Five more drone kills really getting a lot of damage done here right at the start. Stats as Rogue now coming around with some Zerglings. What is he doing? I mean, he got up to a lair. He hasn't really made any moves since. There we go. Nidus Network dropping down. So one of the big telltale signs of a Ling Queen Nidus attack is the fact that there's only one gas taken. So that pretty much, when you see a lair and there's only one gas and you never go into a second gas, absolutely expect it to be a Ling Queen Nidus. The six more drones go down, but at the cost of two of the Oracles, and especially against a Ling Queen Nidus, those Oracles would be very nice to have at home because if they can help pick off a few Lings, if some of them slip elsewhere while the main army is fighting one location, well, that can obviously go a huge way, as we're going to see a couple of Adepts out on this main base. I'll tell you what, where's the Phoenix as well? Phoenix on the right, the Ling here, going to get picked off as well. I'm just looking to see where the Nidus is going to get built, right? There's no Overlords around because the Phoenix is still around, so we have an interesting little scenario. That is a cancel, and it's the rebuild. Here comes the Zerglings, and suddenly Stats is like, well, that's a lot of Zerglings, and I'm in some trouble. Is them all caught out the front here as well. And now the Overseer heading to the main with no denial, so that's going to be a Nidus network in the main with no Immortal to deny it. This has a very good chance of coming up right now. Where is it going to be that Nidus? Okay, he was already building one in the center of the map. Now Stats knows it's going to be Nidus. Now one loads up in the middle as well, in the middle of the main. That's going to put the Queens in there for the moment. Actually, a two Stalkers, three Stalkers warping in. That's just not going to be enough. These Lings on the third base as well, making sure to get that cancel. Queen start popping out. Transfusion's available. Nidus will hold. And now Stalkers just don't do that well against Zerglings. And honestly, nothing really does amazingly against Zerglings here. As Lings coming through the natural as well. They're going to start surrounding armies on both sides here. Those force fields not really holding the Zerg off that much either. As Lings continue to get off the top of those sentries. And Rogue will find a quick win in game number one of this Ling Queen Nidus attack. Aggressive, decisive. Stats didn't know it was coming, he didn't have the scouting information he needed, and because of that he was out of position, he was completely caught off guard, and again I think losing those oracles is a big loss as well, because those oracles would have gone a long way to protecting those units, if he has those oracles at home, when he gets surrounded on the third base, absolutely you can still defend, there's, you know, there's no way you just straight up die there. But obviously that was the beginning of the end and then Rogue just spammed Brew and won the game. So Rogue goes up by one in his best of three. And we're going to go into game number two in a couple of moments to see how things continue onwards. Second map coming up. Let's jump into it. Okay, okay. Let's jump into game number two. How are we doing? Do let me know in the comments down below how you're enjoying the series and who you're cheering for perhaps through this series as well. As in the bottom right hand side, our blue Zerg player, this is Rogue up 1-0 with that Link Queen Nidus all in. In that first game to kick off the A-Series in a pretty explosive way, Turbo Cruise oftentimes asks for those more aggressive games. As we have to the top left hand side, our Red Brothers player from Splice, this is Stats. So game two this best of three excited to see what our players will come up with here of course as we have that hatchery from rogue dropping down in the natural expecting a very different game uh, i feel like the link queen knight is not something you just rely on at this sort of level again and again and again it's definitely one that's fun to throw in there on a map like thunderbird this is absolutely both players chance to play a very fun straight up macro game especially in pvz this map is a nice you know easy three bases from both sides and once you get up to those uh three bases you get to that point where you're going to be able to you know take a fourth very easily right you can go up here as well even it just generally typically leads to the longer games stats and rogue i mean while we know rogue can be an aggressive player while we know he's not afraid to switch it up he's also Someone who we are very often seeing kind of um, he's very capable in the macro games, right? He's definitely capable in those longer games indeed. So that's what I'm trying to get at here. This spawning pool is about to complete. The hatcher on the low ground done in a moment as well. So the first wave of lings, etc. will come out. Although very fast uh, third hatchery here as well means that he will be going up to the uh, three bases quickly. Which means only one queen, no lings to begin with here at the moment. And that probe just going to go patrolling away on the natural expansion. Again, this Nexus just coming up. 
going to be completing in the next few moments. A couple extra queens coming through. Link speed getting started as well in the main base. So getting that ready to roll. Overlord starting up from Rogue in the main as well. So all of this very typical startup here on Thunderbird. Th -th -th Thunderbird. You might notice me being a bit weird when I'm saying uh, words of TH in them, guys. I've had this long time thing where I'm not very good with saying the TH sound, the th sound. I say th instead, right? So uh, I'm trying to be a bit more conscious with trying to fix it. But it's really difficult to obviously try and fix something like that, like, over one day. So it's going to be a bit of a conscious effort. So if you hear me stumbling over something when I'm like, free, free, and I say maybe free, free, or something like, yeah, you, you guys know what's up, so... Just trying to make some progress on my vocal work. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, um, just in case you're wondering why I'm being a bit weird with some of those words. That's all that's going on. I know, some of you guys are like, Wardy, it's fine, it doesn't matter. But, you know, if you've got a way to improve, we'll take it. We, we, we grab it by the shoulders, we shake it, we're like, we're going to fix you. Oh, well, coming in for I mean, an attempt of a scout, right? I mean, it's that sort of stage where if the Phoenix is going to kill you, you may as well go and see whatever you can, which honestly is not a lot, but hey, you get to see both the gas is coming up again at this point. Stats is opening in exactly the same way as what we saw in the opening in game number one. The Stargate, the Phoenix into the Oracle, the gas comes down at the same time as well, so everything so far the same as how we opened in game number one. Obviously, he just thinks this is a good way to open and obviously feels as though he can put himself in a position where moving on from here, he can definitely put himself into a strong spot. He can get some damage done. He can adjust to what happened in that last game. Maybe scout a bit better. Maybe keep a couple of the Oracle safer. And just put himself into a great spot to move on through this game number two. As we're going to be seeing another Oracle on the way out. And that Robo Facility from Stats here now dropping down here on the Natural Expansion as well. A couple of Adepts will start to shade forwards going through towards the third base here now so going to be coming in and looking to well already one drone going down make that two so the adept's actually going to be the real damage dealers this time around last time it was really just the oracles but yeah these couple of adepts getting more aggressive and that's because he's not thrown down that third base as quickly apparently obviously it does mean if you lose these adepts you will not have as much to defend that base with but it's obviously an easier base to defend than on turbo crew so stats deems it worthy to get a bit more aggressive and these oracles actually going to Find a couple more kills. Got a little close to comfort there. And actually will lose one of those oracles. And by the way, this game is once again the triple oracle opening. So all three of those now starting to head down to the bottom side. And well, it would be all three of them, all three of them, but actually instead, it's just gonna be the two because lost one in that little fight. Extra gateways on the way up from stats now, Twilight Council and the Forge being added in on the natural expansion as well. The two adepts coming over, the Zergling goes down. We will see the pylon and soon to be the nexus dropping down on this side. The two oracles able to deal some damage and queen taking quite a few hits. Queen will go down. Again, the oracle is able to pick up a couple of the drones there. And again, Overlord just sitting down on the bottom. Fourth base out in the center as well. The creep spreading through the center of the map was also. Sass just continuing into his immortal production. Again, a very safe way of getting up to the all well, uh, three of these bases here now. So. Making sure you get set up there. Nothing too crazy. And obviously Rogue as well. With the Rogue Roar in the lair much later than the last game. He went plus one melee initially. So he's obviously looking for something of a Ling Bane style. The Rogue Roar maybe just to keep him safe in case Stats gets aggressive before he's truly set up into Ling Bane Hydra. I mean, unless he just wants to play like Roach Ravager Bane. Which is also a compositional choice that's viable here. The problem is with that sort of style, it feels like that's meant to be much more aggressive than like Ling Bane Hydra, which can transition a bit better into later games. And on this map, you're absolutely expecting it to go into a bit of a later game scenario, right? Because we're talking about a, you know, the third base is straight up somewhere that you're just not going to be able to attack into very easily. So you're pretty much guaranteed to get up to four bases before the Zerg can get aggressive, which is why I feel it would be strange not to introduce Hydras to the player style. Do you see that Zergling getting picked off? Again, those few units just continue pressure in at the front lings and ravages pressing forwards. And I'm oh, just going to be seeing a couple of force fields dropping down, a couple of corrosive vials. Trying to hit down on the Oracle, so trying to deal a little bit of damage. And a couple of probes went down on the top side as well, but nothing too serious as stats. Gets the War Prism if he's going to bring these extra results across the map with charge and plus one finishing up now. And he's looking to get a bit aggressive here towards that fourth base of Rogue. 
there's the War Prism lifting up and four Overlords on the way at the same time. And again, that fourth of Rogue really coming in in a very forward position, meaning that it's quite an easy spot for stats to attack into. However, can you attack into it when there is quite a lot of these low-tech units? I love this. Great force field catches three of those four Ravagers. I mean, that's an amazing catch right from the start there. And again, continue to press forwards. A couple of these creep humors will start to be cleaned up in the center of the map. So... Quite a lot of creep being cleaned out. We're going to be seeing some zealots warped in behind the rest of this army as well. And again, zealots already charging forward. See, so Archons and Immortals spread now going a couple of different directions. Other zealots going to be able to pick up the queen there at the front. Goes to Fowls. Actually does hit on a couple of the sentries. I thought they were just out of position, but not quite enough. And 12, 14 workers already going down here. It's been really good damage from stats. As this push has been extremely successful. Rogue. Trying to hold it off, a few roaches coming down, he nearly gets that Archon, but it survives with only hit points left on it. Goes down to the final roach shot there as it popped out of the hatchery. Unfortunately, this hatchery is going to die, and so Stats is going to put himself in a position now where that's generally very good for him, right? Resets the base count to what? Three base against three base? Definitely puts him into a bit more of an interesting spot there as we're going to see these uh, roaches pressing forwards. Still trying to find a way to clean up this army. As stats and Valence coming in as well. They'll help get rid of the Zealots. Get rid of the kind of the tanky front line. And allow the Roaches to pick away at the other units now. Nice pick up on the Immortal Soul, which one the Roaches were diving in for. And another Baneline on the way up from Rogue here. Just up this ramp. Two more Mortals continue to be produced. And the Oracle's coming over from the left-hand side. Extra Zealots warping in on the top as well. Two more Immortals from Stats here. Continuing on out. Roaches, Lings. Setting up atop this ramp to try and see what else they can do. Going to pick off a couple of creep tumors here. Some creep spread being shut down. Another extractor is going to be picked off as well. And again, just going to be seeing this army of stats really just kind of containing Rogue on these three bases. But eventually, stats will just give it up. I mean, Rogue could have mined out over here and gone to the bottom side of the map rather than being so resilient trying to come up top. He does have a base up here that stats actually never checked for. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame for Stats, because he's actually going to see it now. He does have two Immortals, so he'll get some damage to it. And he sees the creep spread. Oh my god, does he not? It's okay, he sees the creep spread now. Um, whether he actually notices the base, or whether he just assumes it's a creep tumor is maybe a bit of a different question, though. No. Rogue dropping down an infestation pit, looking to continue forward. See the storm upgrade coming in on the Temple Archives as well. Important splash damage, which has been added on here now, as we're going to see a few of these Zerglings being picked away at. Two Immortals getting lifted up. They attempt to re-expand here. Denied by the couple of Oracles, actually. And they're going to dive in for the Ravager kill. Now going to get themselves a Queen. Just the one. Oh my god, doesn't even get the Queen. The Oracle's messing up a little bit. Pulling away a bit too soon. Nidus Network dropping down from Rogue in the natural expansion. Again, lifting back up into the Prism. Those couple of Immortals coming out over this right-hand side. Taking a lot of damage, that War Prism. It's going to go down. Stats just completely ignored that over the last couple of moments there, and that is extremely costly. He's just, just, just doesn't care about it at all. Just abandoned on the side of the road. And unfortunately, he wasn't picked up by some caring new owner. It was picked up by the brutal force of the Zerg. Bullied, abused. It was a sad life for the War Prism as Ling's roaches and veins going across the map again. Well, killing the Prism is nice. It's not going to win Rogue the game, though. However, the Swarm Hosts... Might be a bit of a switch up that could win him this game. It's absolutely the sort of style you want to play in this sort of scenario where you're already down, you're hurting, and now what? 13 Swarm Hosts on the way up? That's going to be a big, big difference maker in this army as we're going to be seeing the plus one missile attack going to be finishing in a few moments' time. Bin Nest, again, that centrifugal hook's on the way as well. Let's see if these swarms can make a difference. And the big problem is it's still a lot of roaches, but if you can get the locusts in front to tank some of the initial damage, then attack with the roaches at the same time, there is absolutely possibility. Or use these swarms just to dive around and pull the army apart, then dive in with the roaches when you overwhelm. Coming in here, going to see an Archon in the front in a lot of trouble, but actually Rogue, that's a really nice move from Rogue. you got to give credit to him. A lot of respect for that army and backed away before he got caught by force fields. Really nicely done. Even though that Archon is so tempted to try and kill, Made sure just to not lose anything at all. Really well done by Rogue. Love that little move from him. Here you go. His chance now. But this time he is a bit too far forward. And the force will catch a lot of units. Storms are going to capitalize on that as well. 
And that is a huge shutdown here. And these swallows just did nothing as well, by the way. Like, really nothing at all. I feel like the Locust Army just kind of fought a little bit. We were watching the Roaches, but Locust Army kind of fought with this army a little bit. But didn't really achieve much. And again, over here, the Swallows backed away before they can get anything done. So, here's me getting all hyped and excited about these Swarm Hosts. So far, they are yet to show us any sort of success. Any sort of success at all. As we see Blink and Plus 3 attack on the way as well. Going to be seeing those couple of extra upgrades continue to come through. More spine crawlers building in the front and to the right-hand side. Rogue. Well, he's got a couple of queens which are already taking a few hits here. A couple of throws of fouls dropping down. You can see a storm dropping in too. The locusts now coming through, but they're actually wandering through storms to get there. So they're already low health as they arrive. However, Stats' army's only really got immortals left in it. Is that enough to keep pressing? Obviously, with the locusts down already. There's no real need for splash damage. The Immortals generally do very well against the Roaches, but this is a lot of Roaches. Ravages as well. Two more Archons morphing in. Corrosive Bows kill the Archons as they morph, not kill, but heard heaven. Able to pick up one kill there in the end. Finally, Stats gets some more Zelts for the front line here, but only once he's actually dropped down another Immortal, another Archon. The Zelts go charging in. More Roaches and Ravages dropping as we see those drones being picked away at as well. A lot of drones going down as those couple of Immortals picking their way. Through this hatchery, the spine crawler going to get picked off as well. The roach goes down. And we see the fleet beacon about halfway done as we see the Nidus Worm coming up over on the left hand side. Another storm on top of those few queens. Again, we've just got zealots and immortals continue to press around here. On the top side of the map, locusts are actually around. Finally, the swarm host dealing damage, but it's not enough to kill the Nexus. It will survive with barely any health left on it, so stats will be able to keep mining here for the next couple of moments at the very least. We see the next Nidus on the left-hand side setting up, getting ready to go. Stats army on the top, expecting another Nidus there, but it's not the case. Rogue is going to switch up directions before this next attack, as we see High Templars morphing in. Right away there, three of the Archons morphing in as well. The units coming in from the right side. It's going to be a bit of a flank when these Archons finish up. They'll get some shots off. Stalkers blinking for his catch up as well. But here come the Locusts. They'll actually be able to join this fight a little bit too. So the Locusts coming in from the left hand side. And Stats is doing okay in terms of being able to clean up a lot of these. This Ravager in the sky getting picked off as well. We do see that Archon getting picked off. Did he just lose a warp? Uh, I don't know what those bars hit on. I thought I saw a warp prism go down, but I think my eyes deceive me again. You can see that Stats is so aware of the fact that Rogue is going to try and hit this base. Stalkers will warp in, blink to this side. He's looking for that Nidus Worm, and he is going to fight it and find it, but there's nothing inside. He's just going to get this kill, so he doesn't obviously get this Nidus Worm that's now on the way up here. Stats really just wanted to deny those Swarm Hosts from getting too much further damage done. Again, Rogue now finally rebuilding his base. He lost on that right-hand side, as we saw in the previous fight over here as well. That base was a lifesaver, though, by the way, before, because if he hadn't got that before, there's another night is found without success. If he'd gotten that base before, Rogue would have been in a lot of trouble trying to recover. Instead, it meant Rogue could actually mine from the fourth base, and that was obviously really vital for him being able to survive in this game, I think, and being able to get up enough use to continue after Stats had a very successful early game attack. Here we go with Roach and Rav just pressing forwards, and... Rose of Bows forcing it back. The problem is, as time goes on here, we're still Roach Ravager for Rogue with a few Swarm Hosts mixed in, sure. But it's the Carriers on the way from Stats. He's teching up. His army is improving massively and actually just blinking in towards these Ravagers over here as Nidus's get denied in the main. We've not seen those Swarm Hosts able to do anything for the last little while. They've actually just been on cooldown for an eternity. Finally, they do find a way in over here and they will kill this Nexus. So Stats loses a fourth base as he'll press forwards. I mean, now actually maybe a little bit more pressured stats to get something done here as that base goes down. He's knocked down to his original three bases and, well, is that something he can work with? The Spire dropping down in the main base. Army coming through the center and Overlord going down as well. On the left side, he finally finds that Nidus that just caused him so much trouble. He's going to build a Nexus on this top side, but he hasn't mined out these minerals here. The thing is, carriers are arriving. Rogue has a Spire about to complete, but no money to really utilize it, so... He's not going to be able to build Corruptors right away to deal with these carriers. He's actually just leaving the carriers to defend that new Nexus, so... Stats, happy to re-establish a base up here and just to really make sure he protects that. This Overlord coming through, we'll see the carriers. And meanwhile, we have a Nidus on the left-hand side, which will look to hit the natural, most likely, all this rebuilding base here, but... Stats sees it with the Phoenix, really good at map control, mini-map awareness of Stats, just really aware of... Where these Nidus are coming up, he's really denied the majority of them, and that's one of the key things to making sure that this sort of attack does not get out of control. They can make sure that this style doesn't just kind of drag you down and make life too difficult for you. See these uh, 
Stalkers, great blink by Krill. Gets a Ravager, backs away. Are the carriers here? Yeah, they're over on the right side. I really feel like with the carriers, the zombie is extremely scary. We see Drogue trying to get up into infest Infestors and Neural Parasites, but maybe a little bit too late here, honestly. It's one of those scenarios where because he has just been trailing through the game and he's made some good moves to get back in and he's kept himself in it, but he's not that step ahead. He's not ready for these carriers right away. And even though it's only three of them, they're doing a lot of damage right away here. And you know, they're having a pretty good time. This army of rogue is just slowly dying off. The interceptors will just do very well, continue to pick their way through this. I mean, the few spork rolls will try and buy some time. Thing is, a lot of the supply for rogue is also in swarm hose, which means that currently they're on cooldown. So they're actually no use at all. A fungal and some infested terrans drop down. One storm will help to work their way through the first round of those infested terrans. And rogue will not have enough left over. Stats will get the GG. Tying this series up. 1-1 one, one in the series. GG is and very well played by stats here. Really kept his cool even when he thought he was ahead and they kind of started to slip a little bit. Really did what he needed to. And I think the big thing he really is making sure he denies a lot of those Nidus networks that came up. Making sure he's able to get a lot of those Nidus networks in that sort of position where they just never really get units out. They just get denied right from the start. And boom, from there you're kind of almost good to go again. GG's from stats. He wins game number two. And ties this up, meaning that we're going to a game number three coming up in a moment. Tied up. One to one. Rogue and Stats find themselves at that point where one of them moves on and one of them falls out, depending on this map result. In the top left hand side, the blue Zerg played from Jinnae, Green Wings, it's Rogue. Stats. Our red brought us on the bottom right hand side. Recently, by the time you guys see this video, this voting has ended. But in GSL vs. the world voting, um, the career vote has been ridiculous. It started off with some very clear favorites. Um, but to specifically talk about the Protoss vote, um, Stats has always been able to keep a lead, but Trap made a huge push. And as I talk, the voting isn't over, but Trap currently trails Stats by 100 votes. But. He does have more votes than the Terran players, and so because of that, Trap is likely to get invited as one of the additional players on votes anyways. So, it's crazy. Stats obviously looking to secure his place, but really, I think uh, Stats was the absolute favorite in that uh, poll, and now it got, uh, you know, towards the end here, it got extremely close. So, it was really cool. I mean, the GSL versus the World vote was really cool to see uh, this year. I'm not really a fan of the vote, and there's a lot of flaws to it. Um, a laser, for example, hit up a big YouTube friend, got him like 11,000 votes in a day, and basically just won. So it's pretty crazy sometimes. I don't think it's ideal, but I really thought the Korean vote, for example, was very cool because we saw a lot of players streaming, even Mario streamed to try and help get votes for his teammates. So uh, a lot of players streaming and kind of campaigning to get themselves in GSL versus the world. That'll be a great tournament, August 15th or so, the weekend around that date. That's when that's going to be happening, so... Make sure you check that out. Hatchery is dropping down here from Rogue as we get set up onto Acropolis. Then have a little bit of a look to see how this one is going to be setting up. We see this Proba stats coming over to this left-hand side. And it's going to be coming over the left and through this Natural Expansion Queen on the way up. Something that stats will be able to see. I mean, there's not really much to scout. Main thing you get to see is a Hatchery coming up. It's a kind of a late scout from stats as well, right? It's not a probe super early in the game to try and block a Hatchery. Um, it's a probe that's just here to look for further info, look to see are there lings coming across the map, no do I need to be cautious of those, P just picking up some extra info here basically and he is going to open for Twilight Council now, in PvZ the Twilight Council opening will oftentimes just mean you're going into a Dark Shrine, and that's not, not exactly super cheesy, it's actually just more of a macro opening, the Dark Temple opening, morph them into Archons and get the Warp Prism up of course as well, so we're expecting to see a Robo Facility with this and there is that next stage of this from stats. So stats kind of playing by the by the rule book at the moment, kind of playing as long as you would expect him to, as the stalker through the center of the map and coming over to the left hand side, going to be able to take the watchtower for a moment. And again, just going to be seeing the stalker continue to have a little bit of a wander around here, a good little bit of fun seeing what's going on, and uh, yeah, just controlling the map a little bit. Stats going to pull it back before, you know, Link Speed could potentially hit. Obviously, this is quite a late Link Speed from Rogue. He hasn't started yet, despite 150 gas in the bank. But if Link Speed was on the way, that Stalker doesn't want to be caught off guard by Links. He also wants to be in position to wall off the front. And we're really just watching for the Warp Prism out of the Robo. 
That's going to be our main point of attention for the next couple of minutes of this game because obviously the Archon harassment tends to go on for a little while. Now we see one Adept being made. Let's see if we see Adept number two as well because usually with the Archon drop lately, we've been seeing two Adepts and the two Adepts actually go towards, for example, maybe the third base while the Archons hit the main. And as the Archons harass the main, the Adept's job is to target down as many drones as possible. And that kind of multi-prong is sort of a new feature to this uh, style of uh, PVZ. And it's something that actually, it was just like that small little switch up that really actually has a much larger effect on Zerg players than you'd think. You'd think Zerg's like, ah, yeah, I can deal with a couple of Adepts. But because Pro players just started doing it, they were like, oh my god. And next thing you know, they actually get a lot done as the Adept will pick off that Zergling. So I guess with one Adept coming across, he's going to morph in the Archons and then maybe the Adept afterwards. And maybe he gets the second Adept first and, you know, he's going to get the second Adept and one of the Archons right away, or the first two DTs. Just move forward to double check Rook has detection. Spoiler alert, Rook doesn't. That said, he does have an Overseer morphing in right next to this, so at most, maybe a couple of unit kills at most, right? And in this scenario, Rook pulls away pretty quickly. So he has the Overseer out. The Adepts go into the natural expansion where they'll find two drones. I don't really like this. I feel like he kind of forced the units away from the third base. So they just kind of ran straight in towards those adepts. I would have much preferred to wait for the Archons to come around and then the adepts go, baby. Yeah, the natural is fine, but, you know, with DTs, these units just ran away. With Archons, they're probably going to, you know, sit and fight back a little bit more. So I feel like that was maybe a waste of those adepts. As stats, there's the extra two DTs. The Archons coming in in a moment. Building up an immortal behind this. So, I've always got to remember here that there's definitely potential for aggressive follow ups from these sort of attacks. Uh, where you can hit with kind of, you know, multiple Immortals and Archons very early in the game. And it can be very difficult for the Zerg to deal with that as Rogue. 54 drones already. Stats doesn't look like he's getting aggressive, though. The signs are there for him to continue macroing, right? You know, two more probes in production. He's already on 47, dropping down now that extra Nexus. Putting himself in this position here, where he's going to be able to just keep on expanding, pushing out onto the map, etc. Roach speed going to be finishing in a few moments time and do you have the Archons able to deal some damage to the Queens? Spire drops down on that uh, left hand side as well so again that Spire up behind that mineral line. And again extra Roaches building up at the moment. A model on the way out of the Robo facility and the two models of the two Archons sorry here from Stas just still trying to harass Rogue. Doing a pretty good job of holding this off for the moment, though, as we see this queen targeting down the warp prism. Let's see, warp prism gets low. You have to get out of there. You do not want to lose the prism because it pretty much means you lose the immortals unless you can get a recall off in time. But that obviously becomes very risky. And in general, you want to keep the prism on the map to keep on applying pressure. Well, we talked about stats was continuing to set up towards the, you know, the more macro focused game that third base obviously being a pretty big indicator of that and we do see the plus one in the blink is his next stage of this so actually blink over charge i think because did he see a spire because there is a spire on the way from rogue is that on the third base here yes it is he didn't see it but he is going to blink that's very interesting actually maybe he just wants to okay the other way that this could work out is he wants to get aggressive and stalkers do very well against a roach based army and this is a roach based army there isn't even link speed in play so all the time if you play a Stalker style and suddenly Ling start coming out, you're actually suddenly in trouble. But in this scenario, actually Stalkers will do very well and will really power up this attack. And I tell you what, attacking at this point where just before the mutas come out, it's so powerful. It really is an amazing kind of uh, moment to be in as you see. I'm just coming over this left-hand side, Archon's able to get rid of a couple of Creep Tumors there. These few Stalkers able to get some damage on Roaches and picking off one of those, the other already taking some damage as well will go down. All of those roaches getting picked off as Rogue coming through the center of the map. Roaches and Ravages all the way out over to that right-hand side. Mutalisks down to the bottom. And we're going to see what they can do as they fly in towards the main base. These few stalkers of stats coming in there. More Ravages morphing from Rogue up on the top side. And, well, stats giving a lot of uh, caution to this. A couple of crows of will land, but not really achieve much as Rogue continues to press forwards. Sentries are able to... Uh, Deal a little bit more damage there from Rogue, so a bit more done so far. And Roaches and Ravs are still coming around, and Stats is going to jump on this pretty quickly, so he's kind of going for it. Rogue is drawing up massively behind this, but how much is he going to lose? There are Mutalisks in the main. We'll check in on those in a moment, but look at that blink. 
able to again just really take advantage of this. And you can see now that Rogue realizes that there's no Zealots in this, instantly starts up Link Speed because he probably wants some Links to help out. All of these Ravagers go down. Now the middle is they've picked up nine worker kills, but they are being turned away because of Blink Stalkers. There's a lot of mobility to deal with these mutilists. They're not going to be able to get done as much as they would like to. And so those mutilists turn back into the center of the map, coming down the bottom. Plus one missile is going to finish up in a few moments' time. Plus one melee coming in as well. And again, this army of stats back over to the left-hand side. And, well, he's just going to go for the push, right? He just killed off a lot of Rogue's units, and now his Rogue rebuilds. He doesn't have many tech units. He's got very few Ravagers. Those are obviously usually very important to be part of this composition to make the Roach style kind of work. Because that's something that's just a little bit beyond Roaches. And again, we still don't even have Link Speed yet. You can see that you know Rogue wants to bring in more Zergans to this because he knows the importance against this sort of style and this composition. But Stats played this beautifully. Loved the counters that he set up. And yeah, he's losing a few more probes to those Mutalisks. But unless he really sits in too many throws of battles here, I don't see this push being shut down. He's already leaving his supplies, and Rogue's not even going to let us see the final fight. He taps out way before then. GG Stats takes game number three, and he is able to go up 2-1 to one and win this series. Great job by Stats. Great series, actually. A bit of everything, you know, some Zerg aggression game one, some macro from both of them game two, If it, even if it was kind of a Stats advantage. And then that final game, we obviously saw Stats really able to uh really able to uh just kind of take control himself you know really had a great adjustment to the style that you know rogue was playing the blink is not a common way to open there initially it was so uncommon that i kind of thought he saw the spire but he didn't even see the spire maybe he had an inkling about the spire maybe there was something that set him off but i think it was mostly just the fact he knew there was no link speed and that is a huge factor because again links are just such a big counter to those stalkers well that wraps us up for another of these youtube casts guys i hope you did enjoy if you did, do hit that like button on the video. Let people know that it's worth watching. Obviously, it helps a lot of the YouTube algorithm. So leave a comment down below if you can as well. And of course, most importantly, if you don't already subscribe to the channel, do consider subscribing. Putting up daily YouTube videos here. Obviously, a lot of them come from the stream. But as I mentioned, we're getting back into track. Or getting back on track with trying to get some of the YouTube-only casts up. So that you guys have something extra to watch out for. Thanks so much for dropping by today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And... See you guys next time. Uh, I'm not sure when the next YouTube only cast will come up. Hopefully not too long. Uh, but obviously uh, there'll be daily content no matter what. So uh, sit back, enjoy, watch our other videos. Peace out.